The oceans that cover most of the Earth's surface are invisible territories teeming with life. Far beneath the waves, where no sunlight penetrates, is the Twilight Zone, a world devoid of light. We offer to dive with us today into the mysteries of our planet, revealing some of the secrets of the Twilight Zone of the deep sea world. Twilight Zone of the Ocean, or as it is called, Dysphotic Zone, is the middle layer of ocean waters, which extends to a depth of 200 meters to two kilometers, which extends to a depth of 200 meters to two kilometers. Near the upper boundary of this area, primary production through photosynthesis is no longer possible. And at depths below this zone, light from the surface practically does not penetrate, which creates an atmosphere that is not rosy. However, despite the lack of light, life is abundant in this zone, although different from that found in the higher or lower layers of the ocean. It is home to a variety of marine organisms whose life activities have a major impact on the global carbon cycle and thus on important climate processes across the planet. One of the key mechanisms in carbon transport may be the daily vertical migration of mesopelagic animals from the twilight zone to the surface and back. That is, they spend the day at depth, hiding from predators, and at night, under the cover of darkness, rise to the surface for nutrients. This behavior leads to the transfer of part of the carbon absorbed by them with food to greater depths together with the products of life. It is thought that the biomass of fish living in the mesopelagic zone may be 100 times greater than the total biomass of all fish caught annually in the world. For example, lanternfish, of which there are about 250 species, are not only the most common fish in the twilight zone of the ocean, but also the most common vertebrates on the planet. Their huge numbers were first noticed during World War. Aye, aye, when marine sonar operators saw echoes from what appeared to be the solid sea floor rising to the surface at night and sinking back down at dawn. In fact, the sound pulses reflected off the swim bladders of billions of lanternfish as they congregated in dense layers, hiding at depth. Their daily swimming, up and down, formed vital links between the surface and the deep. Of course, one of the characteristic inhabitants of the twilight zone are bioluminescent organisms. But why there? The fact is that because of the scant penetration of sunlight, many inhabitants of this world have learned to emit light through the process of bioluminescence. It is believed that up to 90s of living organisms living in this zone are able to emit their own light, like deep sea light bulbs. For example, the dragonfish, which inhabits a wide range of depths of thousands of meters, has a large head and a mouth equipped with many sharp fang-like werewolf teeth. These have a long filamentous structure known as antennae with a light forming photophoter at the tip attached to the chin. A certain species of dragonfish cannot glow for longer than 30 minutes without adrenaline. However, in the presence of adrenaline, it can emit light for hours. Incidentally, they emit a blue-green light whose wavelengths can travel the farthest in the ocean. But further interesting, in front of you is Lampoctea's cruent eventer, a species of combfish whose body is colored dark red in order to blend in with its surroundings. The dark red color masks the bioluminescence of the organisms. It eats and hides it from potential predators. Like all representatives of the type, they move with the help of movement of plates consisting of cilia. There are survival defense mechanisms for the hatchet fish. Two. The size of this fish does not exceed 10 centimeters. At the same time, its eyes are quite large, looking upward and also telescopic. All species of fish that are included in this family have photophores, which are located on the lower half of the body in groups of several pieces. The arrangement of photophores is such that the green light they emit is directed downward, creating what is called an anti-shadow effect. 
This makes the silhouette of the fish, which can be seen against the scattered light falling from above, more blurred. This is what makes the hatchet fish less visible to predators that may be below it. But the more frightening inhabitants in the twilight zone of the ocean is definitely squid. There are quite a few species. For example, the squid fly squid, only seven centimeters long, lives in the Pacific Ocean and the Sea of Japan. The body of the firefly squid is covered with many photophores up to 1101 individual. In the daylight, they look like quite ordinary squid, but in the dark comes a real transformation. The entire body of the squid begins to glow bright blue, blue light. To turn on luciferin, squid increase the flow of oxygen, carrying blood to the photophores. However, increasing or decreasing blood flow is a rather slow process and squid can make their photophores flash on and off many times a second. They do this at the expense of special pigment cells, chromatophores, able to command the nervous system to expand almost instantly, closing the photophores or gather in a point, again opening the luminous organ. Flickering squid live at depths of up to 600 meters and their glow is usually only seen by sea creatures. But every spring, these squid gather for a party off the coast of Japan to attract partners. They turn all their spotlights on full blast, and the coastal waters of the bay are flooded with bright blue light. In front of you, squids from the family, Architeuthidae use a rather unusual way to hunt as well as for defense against predators. Two long tentacles resembling clubs that are equipped with suction cups to grab prey. Extremely unrecommended encounters, and diplomacy won't work either. The squid Histiotuthis heteropsis, also known as the strawberry squid, or the poor squid. Yes, he has one interesting feature, different eyes. His left eye is twice as big, so you are unlikely to catch him reading a book. It's also bright yellow, while the other eye is blue. The researchers did sensitivity modeling of each eye, finding that they perform different tasks. The smaller eye can only see bioluminescent light sources belonging to fish swimming at depth. Increasing its size does not make it more sensitive to flashes of light, so the eye shrank to the smallest possible size. But the silhouettes of objects swimming above the squid in time to notice his large insidious eye which is unable to distinguish bioluminescent glow at a depth of more than 200 meters can be found another representative of cephalopod mollusks it is fully transparent or glass octopus length of about 40 km eyes optic nerves and digestive tract are the only structures visible in its glassy mantle not a good idea for human anatomy. A siphonophore is not a single living creature, but an entire colony of many thousands of living creatures that are united into one body. The aggregate of tiny organisms is called a senosarcoma, and each individual organism is referred to as a zood, 